I want to move on to the biggest star of the weekend in a weekend where there was a lot of spotty quarterback play, particularly from high-end guys, but one guy absolutely lit it up and was <laughs> clearly the best player of the weekend. Tua Tungvaiola, the Dolphins quarterback, threw for 466 yards, uh, three TDs. They He wins a shootout with Justin Herbert and the uh, – I'm about to call it. They're the Los Angeles Chargers now. I was about to say San Diego. I say the same thing. Wins a shootout with the Chargers. <laughs> Wins a shootout with the Chargers. I, I was blown away, impressed with what Tua pulled off, but I also thought I saw examples of things that, like, I wonder if they're going to get away with this all season because I'm not – they got the fastest pair of receivers perhaps in NFL history. I, yeah. I've never – they got half of a Olympic 4 by 100 relay team between Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell. And, and I just wonder if, if Tua has the arm strength to keep up with those guys over a 17-game NFL season. Look great. He, he's got the timing down, and he throws in rhythm, and it works. But there are still some times where – his arm strength kind of concerns me. What's your take on Tua and just his arm and dealing with the pair, the fastest pair of receivers I've ever seen? Well, first off, first off, he's got a good friend of mine, but I think one of the better coaches in the league, and I think should be a, a head coach uh, at some point if that if he chooses to pursue that, and that's Daryl Daryl Bevel, who was. Uh, I think the passing game coordinator. Um, Daryl's excellent at, at finding a way. I mean, I guess the best way to explain it is I've watched I watched Miami a lot last year because of Daryl. And every game, I was with each game I would I would kind of enter the game before I watched it, thinking, no way is. Miami going to get a 70-yard bomb. They they did the previous week. They did the previous week before that and before that and before that. I'm like, there's no way a team is going to get beat deep. But yet, they find a way to hit the big plays. And um, I think in, in regards to Tua's arm, it's you, you wouldn't match the two. You wouldn't say, well, let's pick Tua. He's a big arm. He's a big, big play guy. But what I think he has is great knowledge of the game and his anticipation. And you mentioned this. He's in good rhythm. He knows. Now, every quarterback makes a throw that they wish they had back, that, whether it be way down the field or short. Tua's going to have a couple of those where you go, well, he just didn't have the arm for it. But most of the time, he is in such good rhythm and his footwork and his anticipation, he throws the ball so far in advance before the guy comes out of his break. Uh, his touch, uh, he j I just think that he's so conditioned to his environment, what, what what is expected of him, and he and he plays within that. Most of the time, he plays within his own strengths and weaknesses, and and it served him well. I can't – the combination, and you know, Tyreek Hill had 211 yards, I think, on 12 receptions, and I've been following Tyreek ever since he was in Kansas City. The Chiefs are my favorite team. Thought he was silly, like, man, you're going to leave Patrick Mahomes? My God, this could be the greatest combination yeah. in the history of football. But, but Tyreek Hill, to me, is incredibly unique. I don't know who to compare him to. There's no one when to compare I think him to, the Jason. Yeah. The great receivers are normally about 6'1", 6'2", 6'3". You know, they're oversized, fast tight ends like Terrell Owens. This guy is undersized and a number one receiver. I, I, I just I don't know if we've seen anything like Tyreek Hill. And this is not a knock, but his, as short as he is, 
you would never think that he would maybe a game, maybe a game or two during the year you, where you, you throw him in there and he surprises you and you hit a couple of deep balls. But week after week after week, he manages to produce monumental numbers. And it baffles me, not so much because of his size, but I guess because they have Waddle, they're able to take the top off on one side with with one receiver and bring the other in a different direction or whatever and and get these big plays. Now, I'll say this. You hit Tyreek on a crossing route, and he's got any space at all, look out. And he's got a gear that most players don't have, and that's including the defensive guys going up against him. So keeping him in check, do you play man? Do you double him with some type of zone coverage? Do you two-man with safeties over the top? I'm sure all that has been tried. But I go back to Daryl scheming up plays and ways to get either of those guys a big play once or twice a game. I'm going to make an analogy that on the surface will sound silly, but he's the only guy I can compare him to, and they look nothing alike. But he's midget Randy Moss. Wherever he shows up, offensive points show up, safeties are scared to death, and, and it opens up. I mean, everywhere Randy Moss went, teams went undefeated, teams led the uh, league in points, and, and I'm looking at, you know, the Chiefs were able to win a Super Bowl last year without, uh, without Tyree Hill, but, but their offense is not as explosive without Tyree Hill, and I just can't. The only guy I've seen with this kind of impact was Randy Moss, but he was six foot five, and yeah. this guy is five foot nine, five foot ten, but but he he he's he can't be defense right now. Well, I mean the similarities are twelve receptions, two hundred yards, and you don't have that every game. But he has numbers like that pretty much every game. You know, maybe it's eight receptions for 150 yards, which may be considered an off day for him. The fact that he does it over and over again is very similar to Randy Moss. You knew he was going to do it, but you couldn't stop him. And both of those guys have that definitely uh, in comparison. 